subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV. Welcome once again to Joy Learning TV. And my name is Felix, Operating Crime. Today it's time for ICT. I want you to call a friend, to call a friend that it's time for ICT. Let's learn together. And I'm promising you today, you are going to enjoy the lesson so much. All right, so today we are looking at uh, SHS-1 elective ICT. And I hope you are ready. And the topic for today's lesson is introduction to digital technology and culture. Introduction to digital technology and culture. Right, I hope your notebooks, your pens are ready. Uh, let's zoom straight into the lesson. So before we start, let's look at the lesson's objectives. And by the end of the lesson, the student will be able to explain the term digital culture. And two, explain general issues concerning information technology in everyday life. And three, the student will be able to analyze the roles and impact of information technology in everyday life. So these are the three objectives we want to achieve in this lesson. Right, let's continue. Now let's look at the introduction. Digital technology and culture. Can you live without digital technology in your daily life? And I'm sure the answer will be a big yes. And if it is yes, name some digital technologies you've used. And I know that there are a lot of digital technologies that you can mention because immediately you wake up, what you go in for is to go onto your mobile phone. And today, we cannot do away with our mobile phones or our smartphones. When you wake up in the morning, we straightforward move into our phones and see whether we have received some messages or not. So the smartphones, the mobile phones, have become part and parcel of us, which we cannot do away with them. And we even look at the phone's clock and see the time that we find ourselves. And then we always watch TV, as you are doing today. You are watching me in your various homes. Then we listen to radio. We use the internet in, in communicating to anywhere that you want to communicate. And then we, we look for, we search for information on the internet. I know you can mention a whole lot of digital technologies that you have used before. All right, so I want you to uh, keep mentioning it to me at the comment section, and I'll be glad to respond to them. Thank you. Now, digital technology and culture. Computers and telecommunication devices have made it easier for us to collect, store, manipulate, and share data and information, both individually and within organizations, large and small, public and private. Yes. So, individually, we are able to process information, store them, and even share it among our friends or whoever who needs it. And the same way organizations need information in order to take decisive decisions. ICT has become such an integral part of our daily lives. It has had a major impact on the way we live, work, and play, which it is very difficult for us to discard technology. We have become part and parcel 
of technology. Where if technology is taken away from us, our lives will not be complete. And that is the reason why digital technology and culture is very, very, very important in our daily lives. So now what is digital culture? What is digital culture? And in simple put, this is how I have defined digital culture. Digital culture is a concept that describes the idea that technology and the internet significantly shape the way we interact, behave, think, and communicate as human beings in a societal setting. Digital technology is the concept that describes the idea that technology and the internet significantly shape the way we interact, behave, think, and communicate as human beings in a societal setting. And the term digital culture is in connection with two keywords. The first one is the internet, and then the second one is computer crime. So let's look at what the internet is in connection with digital culture. Remember, I have already told you that it's difficult for us to do away with the internet today because the internet has become a vital tool which helps us in doing research, communicating, and even receiving entertainment on them. So let's see what the internet is. What is the internet? The internet is the world's largest, largest interconnected group of computer networks. It is the world's largest interconnected group of computer networks. It is simply a network of various networks of computers that are able to communicate and share information with one another. The internet is a global network of billions of computers and other electronic devices. With the internet, it is possible to access almost any information, communicate with anyone else in the world, and do more with it. Right. You can do all of these by connecting a computer to the internet, which is also called going online. Going online. When someone says a computer is online, it's just another way of saying it is connected to the internet. And there is a diagram of two computers which are connected to a telecommunication max, as you can see on the screen. Two computers are connected together with telecommunication equipment. So in simple put, before you can be connected to the internet, you basically need a computer and you need a telecommunication device which will extend you to the world, because we have said that the internet is networks of all network in the world. And for that matter, you need to connect your computer to a telecommunication device. And you know, in Ghana, our main telecommunication organization or company is the Vodafone, is the Vodafone. And therefore, to be able to connect your computers to the internet, you need to speak to these organizations. Right. Let's look at other things you can do on the internet. The other things that you can do on the internet. And one of the best features of the internet is the ability 
of communicates among almost instantly with one another in the world. The internet offer, offers you the ability to communicate with your friends or your relatives instantly without any delay, irrespective of your geographical locations. You can use the internet in communicating. And secondly, internet helps us to send emails or the electronic mail which is one of the oldest and most universal way to communicate and share information on the internet. And billions of people use the emails in sending messages to friends and relatives. All organizations as well use the email in their communication processes. Then the third one is the social media. The internet provides the platform for us to socialize on the social media. And I hope, um, my dear students, most of you are having accounts in um, some of these social media platforms, especially Facebook, Instagram, and the rest. So social media allow people to connect in variety of ways and build communities online. And there are many other things you can do on the internet as well. There are thousands of ways to keep up with news or shop for anything online. So today the internet gives us the platform to shop online to be able to buy and sell on the internet and some people even use the internet in paying their utility bills at home your electricity bill your phone your water etc and etc you can pay them online and then the internet is also use in managing your bank account. Today, people are able to stay at home and still do business with their banks. You don't need to go to the banking hall to be able to transfer or receive money onto your phone. And that is what we call the mobile money platform. And all these are supported by the internet and then people as well also watch tv online and this is also supported by the internet as you can see me speaking to you most of you are using youtube and you know youtube is powered by the internet so you can only be connected to the internet before you can watch me on youtube Right, and you can learn or do almost everything online. As you are doing at home, you are learning with me. And those of you who are not on TV, you are online watching on YouTube, Instagram, and the rest. Right, so these are the few things that you can use the internet to do. And I know you can mention a whole lot more. I want you to be... Uh, mentioning it to me, and I'll be glad to respond to them at the comment section. Thank you. Then another terminology which is associated with digital culture is computer crime. Computer crime. And what is computer crime? The digital culture has come with new ways of deception and text, basically known as computer crime. A typical example is our popular term that we use 419 or fraud. Right, and I hope we all know this term, 419 or theft or fraud. So computer crime is all the misconduct that is used computer, that 
use computer networks or devices to advance through other means to fraud and steal other people's properties. Computer crime is basically all the misconduct that is that a computer use or a network or a device to advance through other means to fraud and steal other people's properties. And I've listed three examples of these computer crimes. And the first example is malware, hacking, and phishing. So these are the three examples of crimes which are perpetrated by other people online, which is causing harm to organizations and individuals. So what do we mean by a malware? A malware is a software which is specially designed to disrupt, damage, or gain unauthorized access to a computer. It's a special software which is designed to disrupt, damage, or gain unauthorized access to a computer. So we have some people who design certain softwares to be able to disrupt other people's computers and systems and damage them, which I know is not a good thing. So it's not something that you should also do it. It is a bad thing. In actual sense, we design computer systems or technology to be able to help people live a meaningful life. But if your idea is to design a software which will go and damage other people's system, then you are not doing good to the society. You are doing more harm to the society than good. Then we have hacking. And I hope you have heard the word hacking before. Or the person who perpetrate this act is what we call the hacker, the hacker. So now what is hacking? Hacking refers to the practice of modifying or altering computer software and hardware to accomplish a goal that is considered to be outside of the creator's original objectives. Hacking refers to the practice of modifying or altering computer software and hardware to accomplish a goal that is considered to be outside of the creator's original objectives. This activity too is not good. And we have some people with special programming skill who is able to write programs that go and steal other people's information on the internet. You know, the internet is a network connected all over the world. And people sit anywhere and commit certain crime which is not beneficial to the society. So I will entreat you not to pursue some of these things. But you know, we have ethical hacking who, whose responsibility is to make sure that we block the activities of these hackers or we prevent the hackers from taking or stealing information or vital information of some people or the organization. Right, and then the last one that we will talk about in connection with computer crime is phishing. Phishing. 
And I'm not talking about the fish that we uh, get from the sea or rivers or whatever we find them. But I'm talking about computer fishing. And in computing, when you talk about fishing, is the attempt to obtain sensitive information such as usernames, password, and credit card details, often for malicious reasons, by disguising as a trustworthy entity in an electronic communication. So phishing is an attempt to obtain sensitive information such as usernames, passwords, and credit card details, often for malicious reasons, by disguising as a trustworthy entity in an electronic communication. So these are the three examples of computer crimes that happens on the internet. I know you have a whole lot more to talk about. I want you to be mentioning them to me in the comment section, or you can send them to me for clarification. And I hope you are going to do it. Thank you. Now let's look at the role and impact of information technology on education. The role and impact of information technology on education. And the first role or the impact we want to talk about is e-learning. It's e-learning. And that is what you and I is doing today. Now, what is e-learning? E-learning is learning using electronic technologies to access educational materials outside of a traditional classroom. It is the learning using electronic technologies to access educational materials outside of a traditional classroom. And that is what you and I is doing. You are watching me on your TV, on social media, to supplement what your teachers are telling you in the classroom. And basically what we are doing is electronic learning. Other terms used to describe e-learning include distance education, computerized electronic learning, online learning, and internet learning. All these terms are associated with e-learning or electronic learning. Now let's look at the role of e-learning in education. And the key role that e-learning plays in education is to facilitate easy access to educational materials from any parts of the earth location and time. So now what I'm doing today, you can stay in any part of the world and still, if you have access to our TV channel or you have access to the internet, you can be able to watch me irrespective of your geographical area on the internet and specifically on YouTube where we find ourselves. Right, so that it can help you to understand certain concepts that your teacher or your teachers teach you in a classroom which you find it difficult to understand. Right. So I have outlined three key impacts of e-learning in education. And the first one is there has been an increase of accessibility of educational materials. Yes, e-learning has increased accessibility of educational materials. And two, it has also met the need of diverse ways of learning. 
e-learning has met or has met the needs of diverse ways of learning. And three, many people have easy access to education, irrespective of your location. You can be able to be educated on either on TV, online, or any other electronic technology used in learning. Right, so these are the impacts of e-learning in education. Right, let's look at the benefits of e-learning. And the first one is, it is used as a tool to support learning process. Yes, of course, what we are doing today, I am supporting what your teachers are teaching you in your schools that you find yourself. Two, it allows easy access to educational materials. Yes. And it provides a flexible space, time, and pace of study. Yes. So today we are sitting comfortably in your homes and you are enjoying this lesson. You can pause it and rewind and listen to certain things that you didn't hear it well. And that is what you mean by you learn at your own pace and time. And for e-learning has provided immediate feedbacks. It has provided immediate feedback. Five, it provides different learning methods for different learning needs. E-learning has provided different learning methods for different learning needs. And then the last one, e-learning has allowed students to learn on their own. Or oh, it helps students to learn on their own. Right, so these are the six benefits of e-learning that I have outlined. And I know you can also mention some benefits of e-learning. And I want you to be mentioning it on the comment section, or you can send it to me if it is possible for me to look at it. Right. Then the next technology I want us to talk about is electronic mail, or what we call the email. What is it? And how is it important in education? Emails, or email is a message that may contain text, files, images, or other attachments sent through a network to a specified individual or a group of individuals. And roles of email on education. The key role of emails on education is that it aids in the exchange of information as a faster and cheaper rate compared to the traditional mails. Yes, I hope you know that in schools, school management are able to send email messages to parents or students when there is an important meeting which is going to happen in the school. And what we are saying is that emails are cheaper as compared to the, not, the traditional mailing systems. Right. Let's look at the impacts of email on education. One, teachers can send bulk messages within a short time using the email. Teachers can send bulk messages within a short time using emails. Two, students can easily submit their work to their teachers using 
emails. And students can easily communicate with each other using emails. So these are the three impacts that emails provide on education. And I know you can also mention a whole lot more. I want to see them at the comment section. Right, so let's look at the benefits of email. One, it is much cheaper sent out emails to many people and to far places. It is much cheaper to send out emails to many people and to far places. Two, emails travels faster than letters at the post office. And I hope you agree with me on this point. At times it takes a longer time for your letters to be sent through Ghana Post or the post office. And two, emails do not get lost as compared to our traditional mail, which can get missing on the way or when there is a disaster on the way, it can get lost. Two, uh, sorry, four, emails are easier to keep copies of every message sent. Yes, so with emails, you are able to what? Keep a backup so that in case there is any problem, you can resend them again. And then five, it is easier to attach and send messages in other media types, such as audio, video, and graphics. So emails are able to help us combine audio, which is the voice, video, moving pictures, and then graphics, which are pictures, can be sent with ease to our friends and relative, or even in a business environment. So these are the benefits. I know you can mention more, please do, and let's see at the comment section. Thank you. Let's, let's look at the third technology. Impact, the roles and impact of ICT in education. And the third one is computer-assisted learning, CAR. Computer-assisted learning, CAR. The use of computer to aid in learning. CAR is simply the use of computers to aid in learning. It is typically a software developed to teach a specific lesson or assist a user to learn a specific concept. And there are types of software used in CAR. And I've outlined five of them. The first software or system is drill and practice. And drill and practice is used by disabled people in learning, hearing impaired, or physically challenged people use drills and practice in learning comfortably. Then we have tutorials. Tutorials are special systems which are designed to supplement the learning of certain concepts by people. Then we have problem solving. So we have systems that are able to help you solve complex problems. And this is what we mean by problem solving. Then we have simulations. And simulations are systems and applications which are designed like a real world situation. But this is in the form of online or system which represent the real world situations. 
Then we have calculators, which help us in making calculation in our mathematical subjects or scientific calculations. So these are the five softwares that support computer assisted learning. Let's look at the role of CAR on education, computer assisted learning. With the aid of CAR, it provides more experiences in the form of simulations and other real world problem scenarios which students solve. Yes, that is what CAR provides to learners and teachers. Impact of CAR on education. One, it allows students to gain some real world experiences even before they start working in organization. So CAR is able to help students gain some real world experiences even before they start working in the organization that they find themselves. And then two, or the second impact of CAR is that there is extensive class participation as every student is involved in the learning process. And three, it, is, it targets a wide range of learning modes. CAR targets a wide range of learning modes. So these are the three impacts that I have outlined. And I know you can also mention some impacts of computer assisted learning. Now let's look at the benefits of CAR. One, it allows the learner to learn at his or her own place and time. Two, it provides immediate feedback on performance. And three, lessons are prepared to suit the different learning modes. Four, it allows learners to interact with images and various activities and thereby improves understanding of such concepts. And then the last one, it improves retention of concept through repetitive practice. CAL helps students to improve the retention of concept through repetitive practice. Right, so these are the five benefits that we derive from computer assisted learning. Then we have computer based training, computer based training, the CBT. And CBT is a form of training delivered mainly through the use of computers. It is usually developed as a software and installed on a computer. And examples are simulation softwares that simulates the behavior of environments such as when flying an aeroplane or driving a car. And I hope in the picture you have seen a simulation of a man learning how to drive a car. So now you don't have to go to a driving school where a car is given to you if you don't know how to drive. You can stay in, at the comfort of your room, use simulation in driving before you hit the road, which is more safer. Or if you are learning how to uh, fly an airplane, we don't have to give the airline to you to fly it directly. You have to use simulations before the actual machine is given to you to use. Right, and that is what you mean by computer-based learning. Let's look at the role of computer-based learning on education. One, it aids in educational teaching and learning 
by incorporating various media in a particular concept in order to target different learning modes. And then some impacts of computer-based training on education is that a wide range of learning modes have been targeted. And two, there is, it provides mass education. And three, there is immediate feedback. There is immediate feedback. All right. Then the benefits of CBT, computer-based training. One, it is less expensive as compared to the real-time training. Two, large number of people can, can be trained and supervised at a given time. And three, it provides a wide range of experiences. Four, it improves skills through repetitive practice. And the last one, which is five, it is prepared to suit individuals' way of learning. So these are the five benefits of CBT, computer-based training. Right, so these are the roads and impacts of ICT on education. Let's look at the second one, the roads and impact of ICT on business. So we are finished with education, we are coming to business, and we know that ICT has impacted in business environment so much, so, so much. So what we, the first impact we want to talk about is e-business, or what we call the electronic business. And e-business is the conduct of business processes on the internet. It's the conduct of business processes on the internet. The, these electronic business processes include buying and selling products, supplies and services, processing payments, collaborating with business partners, sharing information, and recruiting employees. So let's look at the rules of e-business on business. And the main rule is that e-business breaks geographical boundaries and is cost effective, thereby improving a business productivity and increasing revenue. And then there are some impact of e-business on business. And the first impact is that it has shortened business processes. And two, it has expanded the market size of a particular product or service. Three, it has simplified the various business processes. And the last one, which is four, through e-business, businesses can now be conducted anywhere at any time. Now let's look at the benefits of e-business. It has created cost saving and operational efficiencies. And two, it reached more customers and markets. Three, it has made it easier for people to do business with one another. And four, it has improved marketing and promotions. Five, it has met the needs and expectations of customers. And lastly, the concentration on things that happens in the business world. Then we have another technology which we use in business, which is computer-assisted manufacturing, which always goes with computer-aided manufacturing. CAM. And what is this CAM? It is the use of computer technologies to facilitate 
and automate manufacturing processes. It is often used together with computer-aided design, which we call the software card. And the key role of CAM in business and the economy is to increase the efficiency, uniformity, and precision of manufacturing goods in industries, thereby decreasing cost, time, and error of manufacturing. Let's look at the impacts. One, it has increased production of goods. Two, it has increased grades of goods. And then there is less error margin in production of goods. It has created unemployment in industries. And it has created new jobs categories. And it has decreased cost of production. And I hope we can all explain all this point in connection with computer-aided manufacturing. Then the first benefit of CAM is that it has improved quality of production by manufacturing goods with accuracy and precision. And two, it has improved quantity of production in a given time by manufacturing goods with speed and then three, creation of new job categories. It has helped create new jobs in every organization. Then the second technology is computer-aided design card or computer-aided design and drafting. Card is the use of computer technology to create either a two-dimensional or a three-dimensional design where there are documentations. Examples are the AutoCAD, the MicroStation Power Draft, the Chief Architect, and then the SketchUp. And you know that today, before you can build any house, you need an architect to draw the building plan or the site plan before you can start. And the typical software that they use in doing this work is what we have mentioned, the AutoCAD, the micro station power draft, the chief architect, or the sketch app. So I want you to research more on these cards. Let's look at the rule of card on business. It is used to easily draft designs and also help with manufacturing processes. And then the impact of card is that less time is used in drafting the designs, and it has created new job categories, and three quality designs due to precise calculations. Then um, let's wrap up with the rules and impact of ICT on health. And the first uh, rule that I will talk about is e-health. And e-health is the application of information and communication technologies to health and a means of improving health services, access, efficiency, and quality. And the main role of e-health on health is to facilitate or improve quality health delivery to a large number of people within a large geographical area in a short period of time. And some impact of e-health on health is that it has created more efficient, convenient, and potentially more cost-effective delivery or care. And more lives are saved through remote consultation. And it has enhanced senior, well, senior wellness and preventive care through telemedicines and remote in-house monitoring and it has also improved administrative efficiencies and coordinations right then we have roles and impact of ICT on the society then we have e-governance and e-governance or electronic governance is application of information and technology for delivering of government services exchange of information 
and communication transactions of the government. And the key role of e-governance is that it has helped in addition to the existing media types of television and radio, e-government aims to inform the mass public about various government issues. It has given a voice to the people. The public is constantly informed with e-governance. So, um, in summary, today, in digital technology and culture, we have learned what a digital culture is, and then we have looked at the general issues concerning digital culture, the various technology used in everyday lives, including emails, e-business, computer-assisted learning, e-health, e-governance, etc., and etc. Their good impact include improving processes of learning, conducting business, and sharing of information. So I know there is no way we can do away with digital culture in our current dispensation. It, is, it will be very, very difficult for us to ignore digital culture. Right, so we have come to the end of the lesson. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you want to um, get more, please, I want you to visit all the social media platforms. On Facebook, it is Joy Learning TV. On Instagram, it is Joy, official Joy Learning TV. And on YouTube, it's Joy Learning TV. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel in order for you to get notification anytime that new content is posted. And my reference material is on terabyte series, elective ICT textbook. You can get it in all the bookshop in Accra and in some selected regions. Right, thank you so much. And I will see you once again. I wish you all the best and God bless us all. Bye bye. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV.